Mark your calendars because Can Jam returns to the Windy City on June 24th and 25th, hosted at the Hyatt Regency Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Before we dive into this preview, we want to thank our Can Jam Chicago sponsors, DCS and Mimic Audio, for helping make the show possible. We also want to thank our Can Jam Chicago media partners, Acoustics, Headphone Guru, and Secrets of Home Theater and High Fidelity. Now, buckle up and prepare for a sneak peek of the astounding year you'll discover at this year's Can Jam Chicago. Hi-Fi Man will be at Can Jam Chicago, and where do I even start here? Because Hi-Fi Man is going to have a lot of new gear at Can Jam Chicago. So, of all the new Hi-Fi Man kit up here, let's start with the one I've spent the most time with. This is the new Hi-Fi Man Svanar Wireless, high-end true wireless earphones. And of all the wireless earphones I've heard to date, to my ears, the Svanar Wireless has clearly taken the lead for the best sounding wireless earphone I've heard for music listening. And I've heard a lot of wireless earphones. Within the Svanar Wireless, Hi-Fi Man uses their Himalaya R2R custom ladder DAC architecture to decode the signal from the Bluetooth module. A miniature headphone amp module inside each earpiece then drives a Hi-Fi Man topology diaphragm driver, which has a diaphragm with a special nanoparticle coating applied to its surface. The Hi-Fi Man Svanar Wireless supports SBC, AAC, and LDAC and operates in three modes, ANC, transparency or pass-through, and there's a Hi-Fi mode. And while I definitely get the best sound from the Svanar Wireless using my Huawei Android phone using LDAC at 2496, the sound with my iPhone using AAC and the Svanar Wireless's Hi-Fi mode is still impressive. The Svanar Wireless's tonal balance is very balanced and its resolution impressive not just for wireless earphones, but just impressive period, especially when using LDAC. Whereas with other true wireless earphones, when I'm listening to music, it's rare I forget I'm listening through wireless earphones. With the Svanar Wireless, I often do forget I'm listening through wireless earphones, the music engaging at the level of hi-fi. So yeah, definitely don't miss the Svanar Wireless at the show. Now, much to the surprise of Hi-Fi Man's fans, Hi-Fi Man recently released these two headphones here, the Hi-Fi Man Aria Organic and the Hi-Fi Man Ananda Nano. To the best of my knowledge, there were no leaks ahead of their launch, no advance notice. They just showed up at Hi-Fi Man's exhibit at Munich High End last month, surprising pretty much everyone. Now, the Aria Organic and Ananda Nano only very recently arrived here at HeadFi HQ, and of the two, I've spent more time with the Aria Organic, and I can tell you now, you will absolutely want to audition the Aria Organic at Can't Jam Chicago. Hi-Fi Man is a company known for offering huge performance at reasonable prices with many of their products, and in my opinion, the Aria Organic may be one of the highest value headphones so far from Hi-Fi Man. It is so good. Hi-Fi Man says that the Aria Organic was designed to provide a fuller sound signature while retaining the wide soundstage and neutral response that made the original Aria and Aria Stealth so successful. Early impressions are that the mission was accomplished. The Aria Organic is rich in tone while still being within my range of neutrality, and they also image beautifully. I'll definitely be spending more time with the Aria Organic after CanJam with the Hi-Fi Man EF-1000 DAC, the DCS Lena stack, and some of the other reference rigs here at HeadFi HQ. Speaking of rich and detailed, the more affordable new Ananda Nano is going to shake up the market at and above its price point. I didn't get to spend too much time with it yet, but the Ananda Nano's full and lively signature had my attention from the start. The Ananda Nano incorporates Hi-Fi Man Stealth Magnets and their nanometer thickness diaphragm. Also with their exhibit, look for the best sounding closed back Hi-Fi Man headphone I've heard so far with the Hi-Fi Man Audivina, which was intended as both a studio and audiophile closed back. The Audivina's ear cup enclosures were designed using a resonance chamber concept inspired in part by the acoustic architecture of a particular German opera house. The Audivina's drivers use Hi-Fi Man's Neo Super Nano diaphragms, which are just 1 to 2 microns thin, and it's a new driver specifically designed for closed back headphones. The Audivina is definitely airy sounding for a closed back, very wide open imaging, and the tonal balance is to my ears more neutral than rich and consistent with its intended split studio monitor and audiophile personalities. And finally, this is the Hi-Fi Man EF-1000 DAC. Unfortunately, it just arrived, so we only had time just before shooting to hoist it up onto this table to show it to you. And as you can see, the EF-1000 DAC is a very full-size DAC amp. The DAC section inside being the top-of-the-line version of Hi-Fi Man's Himalaya R2R ladder DAC architecture called the Himalaya Pro. The amp section is also very noteworthy with a newly developed, fully discrete operational amplifier module in the input stage and a fully balanced amplifier output with a combination of field effect transistors and standard transistors. It's 
designed to drive just about anything, including optimally driving their legendarily hard-to-drive HE6 and Suzvara headphones. I wish I could tell you more about how the EF1000 DAC sounds, but I'll be hearing it for the first time with you at CanJam Chicago. Odyssey will be joining us at CanJam Chicago, and while their top-of-the-line flagships often come to mind when we think of Odyssey, I'd like to focus on two of their latest budget-friendly options. First up is Odyssey's new wireless gaming headphone, the Maxwell. As the spiritual successor to Odyssey's initial wireless gaming models, the Mobius and its more streamlined sibling, the Penrose, the Maxwell is a complete redesign from scratch. There's a new headband, new cups, new connectivity options, and some killer new features. Boasting compatibility with a wide array of gaming platforms like PC, PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, iOS, Android, and more, it supports the latest codecs, including Bluetooth 5.3 LC3 and LC3+, as well as LDAC and AAC. The Xbox version comes preloaded with a Dolby Atmos license, while the PlayStation variant seamlessly integrates with Sony's native Tempest 3D audio engine, ensuring a top-notch 3D surround sound experience right out of the box with many popular platforms. The Maxwell offers an impressive ADR battery life, allowing for extended gaming sessions. And should you somehow manage to exhaust the battery, a quick 20-minute charge can power up a full day of gaming. The Maxwell also introduces a game-changing noise suppression system that effectively minimizes a vast range of ambient noises, from background music and noisy neighbors to more annoying sounds like open mic chewing or even breathing. You can rest assured that with the Maxwell's noise suppression, you won't be that person in the gaming lobby. As you'd expect from Odyssey, the Maxwell showcases their signature sound quality. Although it's primarily designed as a gaming headset, its performance for music playback is remarkable. It offers various EQ presets for different gaming situations, but the default profile sounds wonderful with music. For the tweakers out there, the Odyssey HQ app enables custom EQ creation as well. If you're in the market for a wireless headset, the Odyssey Maxwell should be at the top of your list. Odyssey will also be introducing the MM100, a new entry-level model in Odyssey's professional-focused MM series. While I haven't had the chance to test it myself, Jude got a hands-on demo at High End Munich last month, and his first impressions were quite positive, especially considering its $400 price point. From its design, it seems inspired by the flagship MM500, sprinkled with elements from the Maxwell. As a regular user of that MM500, I'm eager to try out the MM100 for myself. Odyssey will of course be showcasing their flagship offerings, the Odyssey LCD5 and the Odyssey Carbon at their exhibit, alongside Odyssey's complete collection. However, I strongly recommend starting with the Maxwell and the MM100 when you visit Odyssey at CanJam Chicago. We have some very interesting seminars at CanJam Chicago this year, none of which are repeated, so make sure not to miss them. Also, seating is limited, so plan your schedule accordingly so that you don't miss the seminars you want to see. The seminars will all take place in the Copper Room, just around the corner from the main exhibit area. On Saturday, June 24th, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., Chris Behrens, Artist Relations for Odyssey, will present Pro Audio versus Audiophilia, Two Worlds Collide. In this talk, Chris will discuss how pro audio and audiophile playback systems can often sound distinctly different with seemingly fundamental clashes in their goals. While professionals typically insist on flat frequency response and detail, audiophiles tend to favor immersiveness and emotionality, and yet these two worlds must collide to bring about the enjoyment that we all prize. But where? Join Chris Behrens for some fascinating insights on the differences between pro audio and audiophile priorities, preferences, and products, and how we strangely end up hearing the same thing. On Saturday, June 24th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be presenting Evolution of Hearing Simulation and an Examination of Frequency Response Targets and How We Use Them. In case you don't know who I am, I'm Jude Mansilla, and I'm the founder of HeadFi. In my talk, we'll do a quick examination of how the most popular hearing simulation standard, commonly referred to as 711, was first developed well over 40 years ago, and how important advancements made in the decades since have inevitably led to the adoption of emergent standards. Following this, we'll have an insightful discussion of frequency response targets, how they're used in the industry by reviewers and by users, and some important considerations therein, including perceptual considerations. I'm asking, are we missing the target? My talk will dovetail nicely into another seminar happening Sunday by Jacob Sondergaard of Head Acoustics, which I'll get to in just a minute. On Sunday, June 25th, from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m., Michael Ricci, Senior Director of Electroacoustic Engineering from XMEMS Labs, will be presenting Solid State Fidelity, an introduction to piezo MEMS microspeakers for personal audio devices. 
In this talk, Michael will introduce a new transduction mechanism, all silicon piezo MEMS microspeakers that are set to disrupt century-old coil magnet driver architectures. This solid-state microspeaker architecture implements both actuation and diaphragm in silicon using semiconductor MEMS fabrication, resulting in unmatched part-to-part -part frequency response and phase consistency. This innovative transduction mechanism eliminates the spring and suspension recovery time latency of inductive coil motors. The lack of stored energy in the microspeaker structure results in an incredibly low group delay and provides signal accurate response. I've heard some fascinating demos with X-Men's drivers. And on Sunday, June 25th, from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., Jacob Sondergaard from Head Acoustics will give a talk titled Measuring Audio Quality more than frequency response. In this talk, Jacob will discuss MDAX, Multidimensional Audio Quality Score, which is a novel method for instrumental evaluation of audio quality that uses three key criteria for perceived audio playback quality, timbre, or timbre, distortion, and immersiveness. This seminar will look at the auditory test design, method development, and share example results from commercially available devices to show how it applies to the world of headphones. We'll be talking more about MDAX going forward as well as incorporating MDAX scores into a measurement tool on HeadFi. It's a fascinating topic and I think it's also a very important discussion, so don't miss Jacob's talk. Mimic Audio will be joining us at CanJam Chicago this year, and they're also one of our CanJam Chicago sponsors, so thank you Mimic Audio for helping make CanJam Chicago possible. If you're not already familiar with Mimic Audio, you may remember them as Mimic Cables, well known for their quality headphone and speaker cables. These products have been part of countless head fire setups, including mine. Their compact Mini XLR to 3.5mm adapter is a small yet vital part of my gaming setup. With Mimic Audio, they've expanded their range beyond cables and now offer a wide selection of personal audio products, including headphones, DACs, amps, portable players, speaker systems, and of course, custom cables and adapters. They'll be showcasing a wide range of products at CanChamp Chicago, including the final ZE8000 True Wireless Earbuds. The ZE8000 is a surprising system. Each earpiece packs a 13mm aluminum magnesium dynamic driver powered by a Class AB amplifier. This ensures rich bass, clear mids, and smooth highs for an immersive audio experience. While my personal preferences favor the linear and reference-leaning ZE3000, I predict that the ZE8000 will impress many CanJam Chicago attendees. It's not just about the sound, though. The ZE8000 offers advanced features such as active noise cancellation, ambient pass-through, a voice-focused ambient pass-through, and even a special pass-through mode to reduce wind noise. With support for SBC, AAC, Aptex, and Aptex Adaptive Codex, it ensures high-quality audio transmission and compatibility with most wireless sources. It promises 5 hours of continuous playback, with 15 extra hours packed into its wireless charging case. Plus, a quick 5-minute charge can add 45 minutes of listening time. Of course, Mimic Audio's exhibit won't be limited to just IEMs. They will also showcase Final's flagship over-ear headphone, the D8000 Pro, Meza Audio's Lyric and 109 Pro, the full line of DACs from As1X Audio Design, Linear Tube Audio's Z10e electrostatic headphone amp and a variety of electrostats to pair with it, and more. They're even featuring two new tube amps from Amps and Sound, the Nautilus Revision 2 and the Red October Revision 2. With Amps and Sound, you can always anticipate power-packed amps and these models are no exception. The Nautilus Revision 2, a true beast, can deliver up to 5 watts RMS into 32 ohms. It comes with an option for a pair of 6L6GC-STR or KT88 tubes, a single 12AX7 tube, and a choice between two 5AR4 or 5U4 rectifiers. The Red October Revision 2 takes it up a notch, offering up to 6.2 watts RMS into 32 ohms. Amps and Sound considers this their ultimate headphone amplifier. As I understand, it's essentially a Nautilus Revision 2 designed around the iconic 300B, widely revered as one of, if not the finest headphone tube ever made. From what we've heard, the Red October Revision 2 seems like a tribute to this legendary tube. I'm personally eager to explore the capabilities of both amps later this month. Join me at CanJam Chicago, and let's explore the range of amps, DACs, headphones, and even these seemingly unassuming adapters together at Mimic Audio's exhibit. Noble Audio returns to CanJam Chicago with some of the most coveted IMs in our community, beginning with this. This is Ronan, 
A 12 driver model featuring a balanced complement of 8 BA and 4 electrostatic drivers, and it's a long awaited successor to their legendary Katana Inier first launched 7 years ago. Paired with a limited edition Ronin cable developed exclusively for it by Elotech, which is comprised of copper, silver plated copper, and gold plated copper conductors, the Ronin is a complete reference level critical listening package. It offers an impressively neutral tonal balance anchored firmly in its center by an impeccably detailed midrange, which is then flanked by nimble bass and precise highs. If you've been looking to shed tonal imbalance and coloration, I can tell you that Noble's Ronin is about as neutral an in-ear as you'll find in the current IEM landscape. But if you're looking for something more colorful and dynamic, the newest kit on Noble Audio's block is this, the Stage 3. Lilliputian in its proportions, especially in comparison to the Ronin, the Stage 3 is a hybrid stage monitor employing a single dual magnet dynamic driver and dual BA drivers. It's been tuned to deliver a rich and robust mid bass response, accented by lively upper mids, though it's oddly devoid of sibilance, which is a welcome if not unexpected trait that I came to appreciate in my listening tests. So if you're a fan of Harman's IM target, but you're also sensitive to sibilance or simply find stridency to be fatiguing in long listening sessions, I think Noble's new Stage 3 should be a mandatory addition to your audition list. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of true wireless solutions, but this thing sounds amazing. This is Noble's newest true wireless IEM, the Photos Mystique, and it was purpose built specifically for audiophiles. The Photos Mystique is a hybrid with one 8.2mm dynamic driver and two Knowles BA drivers, which results in a default tuning with accentuated mid bass, easy going mids, lively upper mids, and shimmering highs. Basically, if you speak Harman, you'll probably understand this dialect. That said, if you're willing to eat you just a wee bit, you'll be amply rewarded with some dramatic improvements. Noble's Focus app offers six easy EQ presets covering a variety of preferences, but I opted for the personalized EQ that's based on an abbreviated hearing test, and it did wonders. The Focus Mystique supports both Aptex and Aptex Adaptive codecs, and includes a transparency mode, which helps with flight boarding announcements. But that's it. There are no further DSP enhancements, not even ANC, because the Mystique focuses more on what we want to hear and not so much on what we don't want to hear. So, is the Focus Mystique good enough for me to swear off my flagship wire customs? No. But let me tell you, at only $359, I can't easily think of a competitively priced wired solution that sounds dramatically better. Hear for yourself as you test drive the Focus Mystique along with the Stage 3 and the Ronin at Noble Audio's exhibit at CanJam Chicago. ZMF Headphones is one of the most popular boutique headphone makers in our community, which is obvious at every CanJam, as their exhibit is always packed, easily among the most popular of any exhibitors at any of our shows. It's actually really easy to understand why. And if you're already a fan of ZMF Headphones, you already know exactly why. Bevan and Zach Merbach of ZMF Headphones understand that their customers want beautiful looking, beautifully crafted headphones that are meticulously engineered to sound at least as good as they look. And nothing looks like a ZMF headphone. They use gorgeous woods, many types of which I've never previously seen or heard of, and ZMF extracts the full beauty of the grain structures and colors of the woods they work with in ways I think are unparalleled in our industry. For their open back headphones, they also design the most incredible intricate sculptural grills. Some ZMF customers will snap up the same model of headphone in different woods and color combinations because ZMF headphones have massive collector appeal. But for someone like me who loves the ZMF aesthetic, visual artistry, and craftsmanship, that's all secondary to the sound of ZMF headphones. And this is where my greatest admiration for ZMF is rooted. I've known Zach Merbach since he was an enthusiast obsessed with building headphones, traveling to meets and shows in the earliest days of ZMF, coming to HeadFi HQ to share prototypes, to measure in our lab, and to just be a fellow headphone geek. In the years since, Zach and Bevan have massively grown ZMF, reinvested heavily into their business, their team, and of course into production and research and development. They have a slew of top-notch audio analyzers and headphone measurement fixtures, and may be the only company of their size that I'm aware of that has more than one state-of-the-art Brulin Care 5128 measurement mannequin. ZMF is very serious about the engineering that goes into their products. 
At CanJam Chicago, make sure to check out their flagship, Caldera, ZMF's first proprietary planar magnetic headphone. Years of work went into the Caldera, and it was great to see ZMF return to a planar magnetic headphone, but this time with a higher-end planar magnetic driver entirely of their own research, design, and build. There's enough of a story in the Caldera driver alone to make for a much longer discussion. Maybe we'll do something like that someday. But for now, make sure to listen to the Caldera at CanJam Chicago. As much as I love the Caldera, though, the Dynamic ZMF Atrium is one of my favorite headphones at any price, bar none. And the opinions, by the way, seem to be split pretty evenly between the Caldera and the Atrium. For me, it leans a bit to the Atrium. It's just a joy to listen to, and to me speaks to what makes ZMF so successful. The Atrium doesn't match anyone's target, but ZMF's own target for the Atrium. It's its own thing. And it's such a lush, detailed, gorgeous, open-sounding headphone. Again, the Atrium is one of my favorite headphones, period. And don't miss the Atrium's new closed-back sibling, the ZMF Atrium Closed, which brings the Atrium Magic to a closed-back design, which is no mean feat. ZMF applied their considerable engineering capabilities to make that happen, and it should come as no surprise that it's been a huge hit. If you haven't heard the Atrium Closed, don't miss that either at CanJam Chicago. DCS, a well-known name among the audiophile community, is not just attending CanJam Chicago this year, but is also one of our CanJam Chicago sponsors. Thank you, DCS. We are so grateful for your contribution in making CanJam Chicago possible. Over the years, DCS has crafted many wonderful sources featuring the innovative DCS Ring DAC technology, and with the launch of the DCS Bartok, incorporating their unique designs into our headphone rigs became even easier. If you've been following along with our CanJam preview videos, you'll know we at HeadFi HQ hold DCS's Lena system in exceptionally high regard. And if you've been a part of any previous CanJam events, chances are you share our enthusiasm. Without a doubt, the DCS Lena system is among the most comprehensive top-tier audio file systems available. It consists of three main components, the Lena Network DAC, the Lena Master Clock, and the Lena Headphone Amplifier, and it's that last one that I'd like to talk about. The Lena headphone amplifier is a product of rigorous testing and development, driven largely by feedback from the HeadFi community. We, HeadFires, often search for headphone amps capable of driving a broad spectrum of headphones, from high-efficiency dynamics to power-hungry planar magnetic designs, to the extensive array of compact and ear monitors available today. Admittedly, we can be a demanding bunch, and when a headphone amp like Lena comes along offering impressive voltage and current amplification, it immediately becomes a must-try at CanJam events. The Lena amp is a solid-state Class AB design featuring a built-in DC servo system ensuring high power efficiency and excellent linearity. It boasts a billet aluminum chassis with a striking matte black finish that gives a high-quality feel while also being practical. In my eyes, the finish is exceptional and looks even better in person than in photos. On the front, the amp features 6.35mm single-ended, 4-pin balanced XLR, and dual 3-pin balanced XLR connections, alongside a large, smooth volume control which delivers precise left-right channel balance even at the lowest levels. On the back, you'll find inputs for stereo unbalanced RCA with two sets of balanced XLR for buffered or unbuffered signals. And for those of you planning to pair it with other components in the Lena stack, you'll also find two power link jacks to connect the devices for easy seamless control. At CanJam Chicago, you can experience the complete DCS Lena system, including the exceptional Lena headphone amplifier, and DCS's private listening room directly adjacent to the main CanJam exhibit hall. DCS will have a broad range of headphones for you to test, and of course, you're welcome to bring your own too. If you haven't tried the DCS Lena system yet, I strongly recommend making it one of your first stops at CanJam Chicago this year. So many veteran head fires have roots in the Sennheiser HD600 family of headphones. Many are still using the Sennheiser HD600 or HD650 as their primary headphones. It's a legendary line that will forever be among the most important in our industry's history. Now, the latest addition to this family may very well be my favorite in the bunch, though, and it's the new Sennheiser HD660 S2. With the HD660 S2, Sennheiser has optimized driver airflow, moved to a lighter, more responsive voice coil with an impedance of 300 ohms again, and changed the driver surround to lower the resonant frequency. The result is, to me, the best put-together sound signature in the 600 family's history. There's more robust bass presence, which many have felt this lineup definitely needed, myself included. Sennheiser also refined the treble. It's smoother, yet more detailed and resolving up top. 
As I said ahead of CanJam New York, given the HD600 family's history, the HD660 S2 will be remembered as one of the most important new headphone products this year, so make sure to listen to it at CanJam Chicago. Now this is the Sennheiser Momentum True Wireless 3. Of all the True Wireless earphones I've heard to date, the Momentum True Wireless 3 is easily one of the best sounding I've heard for music playback, for musical enjoyment. You can find better noise cancelers, better pass-through modes, both of which I should say though, the Momentum True Wireless 3 does a fine job with. But for music enjoyment, again, it's simply among the best out there of all the True Wireless earphones I've tried so far. I'll go so far as to say that in terms of tonal balance alone, I think the Momentum True Wireless 3 is among the best tuned earphones Sennheiser has made so far, whether wired or wireless. It won't replace their flagship IE900 as my Sennheiser in-ear reference, but the Momentum True Wireless 3 is one of two or three of my current True Wireless references for music listening. It's superb. Of course, make sure to also listen to Sennheiser's exceptional wired earphones, including one of my top references, the Sennheiser IE900, and its siblings, the IE600, IE300, and IE200. Here's a late-breaking piece of news that you may have already seen on the forums. I'm super excited to say that Sennheiser confirmed that at CanJam Chicago, they'll have what I feel is the best-sounding headphone ever made of any type at any price with their Sennheiser HE1, and they'll have the HE1 available to audition in a quiet room. To find out how you can hopefully book a session with the HE1 at CanJam Chicago, we'll have a link on the homepage of HeadFi, or you can go to the CanJam Chicago 2023 thread in the discussion forums at headfi.org. Working on these CanJam previews often results in pleasant surprises, as I sometimes encounter products that exceed my initial expectations. The Fee Audio Prestige certainly falls into this category, and I'll get to the reasons why in just a moment. The Fee Audio Prestige is a tribrid design outfitted with nine drivers per side, a dynamic driver for the lows, balanced armatures for the low mids and mid range, and electrostatic drivers for the highs. The whole system is neatly coordinated by a five-way crossover. It's a well thought out design inside, and that same level of care was given to the fit and finish. The exterior of the Prestige is smooth and comfortable, and has a beautiful face plate with an almost celestial finish. To match some of its siblings in the The Audio family, the Prestige also includes a lightweight, versatile cable that allows for easy switching between 2.5, 3.5, and 4.4mm terminations. In The Audio's range, the Prestige is somewhat of an outlier, not neatly fitting into the same categories as popular models like the V16 Divinity and the Monarch Mark II. I suspect this may be due largely to its unique tuning. The Audio designed the Prestige to deliver a reference studio, monitor-like sound signature. Although to my ears it doesn't hit that target dead center, the outcome presents an interesting balance between a linear reference sound and something a touch more engaging. The mid-range does have a linear reference-like quality, and the high end is clear, extended, and detailed. The lower frequencies, on the other hand, offer a deviation from what I consider a true reference sound, with the dynamic driver adding fullness to the bass. That dynamic driver adds a hint of fullness to the lower bass and sub bass, imbuing the prestige with a final overall sound signature that hits close to my personal sweet spot for audiophile fun. Bass heads, this one won't be for you, but if you're like me and chase detail and resolution, the Prestige should absolutely be on your list at CanJam Chicago. And one last surprising bit of news, I've been told that The Audio will also be showing the successor to their well-loved The Audio Monarch Mark II at the show, the Monarch Mark III. While details remain sparse, my curiosity is certainly piqued. I invite you to join me in trying out the Monarch Mark III, and to experience the Prestige firsthand, this CanJam Chicago. While Deconi Audio is obviously known most for their ear pads and ear tips, at CanJam Chicago they'll be showing their new Deconi Hi-Fi Man Cobalt headphones. The Deconi Hi-Fi Man Cobalt is Deconi's second headphone collaboration. The Cobalt uses a Hi-Fi Man dynamic driver that has a diaphragm with an engineered carbon coating, one of Hi-Fi Man's latest drivers. Deconi worked with Hi-Fi Man on the tuning, including the testing of different materials behind the driver and the ear cup, among many other things. Deconi Audio also drew from their expertise and years of experience with ear pads to offer up two distinct sound signatures for the Cobalt. For the Cobalt, Deconi Audio experimented with multiple ear pad types and ended up with two different sets. There's a fenestrated sheepskin ear pad and an elite velour pair of ear pads with an alternate tuning. I love that they did this, and in early listening, I do prefer one type more than the other, but you'll have to ask me about it at the show. I'm curious to know which you'll prefer, so if you see me at the show, let's compare notes. At its reasonable price, the Deconi Audio Hi-Fi Man Cobalt is a headphone you should make sure not to miss at CanJam Chicago. 
Now, the Dakoni Hi-Fi Man Cobalt is, again, their second headphone collaboration. Their first was a collaboration with Fostex called the Dakoni Audio Blue. Dakoni Audio collaborated with Fostex on this variant of the Fostex T50RP Mark III with a new inner baffle, Dakoni's hybrid ear pads made just for the Dakoni Blue, and, of course, the striking blue colorway. The Dakoni Audio Blue is a very cool collaboration headphone you should also check out at CanJam. Of course, what Dakoni Audio is most known for is for developing ear pads for headphones and ear tips for earphones that are not only for replacement purposes, but also ear pads and ear tips that are acoustically tuned to reach certain sound signature goals and, of course, also for increased comfort. So for CanJam Chicago, make sure to bring your headphones and earphones to Dakoni's exhibit for some fun experimentation. Dakoni also expanded into other accessories. We just ordered several of Dakoni's very cool Savior V2 universal headphone carrying cases, and we can't wait to receive them. We have a few headphones around here. Anyway, do not miss Dakoni Audio's exhibit at CanJam Chicago, and again, especially to audition the new Dakoni Hi-Fi Man Cobalt headphones. This is a remarkable newcomer from engineer and designer Dan Clark, the Carina, an electrostatic headphone that truly stands out. Dan Clark, founder of Dan Clark Audio, is renowned in the audio community for his expertise in planar magnetic designs. It turns out that this expertise seamlessly translates into the realm of electrostatic headphones. Dan's first venture into this field, the Voce, delivered a listening experience uniquely its own, and the Carina represents a further evolution of that experience. The Carina is the first electrostatic headphone to incorporate Dan Clark Audio's Acoustic Metamaterial Tuning System, or AMTS, a technology we've delved into in our videos about their stealth and expanse planar magnetic headphones. If you haven't seen those yet, I highly recommend checking them out. In quick summary, AMTS technology allows Dan Clark Audio to shape and sculpt the final voicing of their headphones, and the way they go about it is surprising and brilliant. Be sure to check out those videos for a full breakdown. The Carina features a refined 88mm electrostatic driver design. To further enhance its performance, Dan Clark Audio developed a new process for constructing the driver, leading to better diaphragm tension. Since the diaphragm is an active, rapidly moving area of the driver, better tension here means cleaner sound and less distortion. Thanks to these advancements, Dan Clark Audio was able to deliver smoother sound throughout the treble and mid-range frequencies with the new Carina. And it's not just the sound that's been improved, comfort has also been kicked up a notch. Just like the Expanse and Stealth models, the Carina features an auto-adjusting headband design, which automatically fits the contours of your head. To further enhance your listening experience, the Carina's pads have been revamped using a combination of leather and suede. This design helps to create a good seal for better sound while minimizing heat and sweat, a feature you'll particularly appreciate during a summer event like CanJam Chicago. Moreover, the team at DCA has meticulously matched the pads on the Carina to ensure a consistent and accurate balance of sound between both ears. And if you're a pet owner, or you happen to roll over your headphone cables from time to time, you'll no doubt appreciate that the cable is user replaceable. From a design perspective, in my view, the Carina is incredibly well thought out and boasts one of the most aesthetically pleasing open grill designs I've ever seen on an electrostatic headphone. I encourage everyone attending CanJam Chicago to take a moment and explore the Carina from Dan Clark Audio. It offers a unique blend of sound quality, comfort, and appealing design, making it a worthwhile demo for any head fire. After all, there is no better way to understand the advancements they've made than to try it for yourself. Stop by Dan Clark Audio's exhibit at CanJam Chicago and try the new Carina alongside the rest of the Dan Clark Audio family of headphones. I'm a huge fan of the Meza Audio Empyrean and Meza's Elite over-ear flagship headphones. In addition to sounding incredible, the Empyrean and Elite also happen to be two of the best-built headphones in the world, maybe the best-built. Now, recently, Meza Audio released angled Alcantara ear pads that work with both the Empyrean and Elite. These pads were carefully engineered and crafted to offer a different sound signature for each of these headphones. And as easy as the ear pads are to remove and install on both of these headphones, it literally takes just seconds. The new Meza Audio angled Alcantara ear pads essentially give Meza, Empyrean, and Elite owners new headphones in their collections. These new ear pads were designed to improve the sound versus the standard Alcantara ear pads for the Empyrean and Elite, while also improving comfort and ergonomics. They feature new foam and have internal dimensions that are larger, giving more room for your ears. With both headphones, the new ear pads re-sculpt the bass in a way I think many people will prefer. The soundstage is also wider and airier, and the imaging improved with the new pads versus the first-generation Alcantara ear pads. 
At Can Jam Chicago, Blue Audio will have these new Meza Audio earpads, so make sure to audition or re-audition the Meza Audio Empyrean and Elite at Blue Audio. Blue Audio's exhibit is always one of those show within a show type of exhibits, so they'll have a lot more in addition to the new Meza Audio earpads at Can Jam. A couple of other highlights from Blue Audio's exhibit include Campfire Audio's latest IEMs, the Trifecta, the Andromeda Emerald Sea, and these, my favorite of Campfire's latest in ears, the Solaris Stellar Horizon. This has been one of the IEMs I've carried a lot since its release. I especially love how it images. And the Solaris Stellar Horizon is also, to my eyes, one of the loveliest looking IEMs released in some time. Bloom Audio will also have Elatex cables, including their latest, the Elatex Raphael. They'll also have the Elatex Perseus, which is an exclusive Elatex collaboration cable with Bloom Audio. So make sure to bring your IEMs to Bloom Audio's exhibit to try them out with Elatex's complete IEM cable lineup. Lucid Audio will be at CanJam Chicago, and they'll have both of their storied brands there with them, Edemotic and Westone. Now, if I had to pick one of their earphones to recommend auditioning at CanJam Chicago, I'd say go for the Edemotic Evo. The Edemotic Evo is Edemotic's first with multiple drivers per side. It has three balanced armatures per side in a dual-low, single mid-treble configuration with a two-way crossover. What's so significant about the Evo? Well, Edemotic had been for many years, many years, staunch believers in single driver designs. So for Edemotic to venture into multi-driver designs was shocking to Edemotic fans, myself included. But they did it, and I'm glad they did, because the Evo is my favorite Edemotic earphone to date. The Evo continues with the spirit of Edemotic's legendarily neutralish sound signature, but with more bass presence and clarity. To my ears, the Evo sounds better than any of their single driver earphones before it and should definitely be auditioned at CanJam Chicago. Edemotic will also have the Drop Edemotic ERX IEMs that, as the name suggests, Edemotic co-developed with Drop. The Drop Edemotic ERX combines the single driver design of Edemotic's legendary ER4XR and the cable-up concha type form factor of the Evo with a sound signature that's a sort of marriage of those two. I know a lot of you have been waiting to hear the Drop Edemotic ERX since the collaboration's announcement, so make sure to give the ERX a listen at CanJam Chicago. On the West Tone side, make sure to audition the West Tone mock in-ears that finally provide a universal fit option for their West Tone ES Professional Custom Monitors sound signatures. My favorite of the mock series is the Mach 60, but I'm probably biased because the Mach 60's voicing is influenced by the Custom Fit Westone ES60, which has been one of my favorite Custom Fit IEMs for many years. This is the T10 Bespoke by Ear Micro and Clips, and I know exactly what you're thinking right now. Oh look, it's another blinged out fashion conscious luxury product for non-head fires that don't know anything about sound quality. I know you're thinking that because, well, just look at it. But no, at its most basic level, yes, the T10 Bespoke will do true wireless things. It plays audio, it handles phone calls, and it blots out or brings in the outside world with its ANC and transparency modes respectively. But cleverly hidden inside this beguiling frame is an entire I.O. and control platform, employing multiple processors, nine access gyroscopes, all powered by broad EOS with full IFT integration. That means you'll be able to use your voice, your expressions, your motions, all of which you can program and customize yourself to control not just audio playback, but a wide range of other devices as well, from RGB lighting to PowerPoint presentations. And with MIDI 2.0 integration right around the corner, the musicians and performing artists amongst us gain the ability to control click tracks, trigger loop pedals, and more. All of that makes the T10 bespoke, despite appearances, less of a lifestyle product and far more of a life hack product. That said, I won't pretend these aren't absolutely luxurious in their appointments. They are. Each earpiece features zirconia frames, further protected by Cerakote coatings, which are available in over 200 colors. The T10 bespoke charger cases begin life as bronze superstructures dressed in your choice of custom finishes, including precious metals. And finally, Charger case cover inserts are available in a generous array of options, including carbon fiber, wood veneer, leather or suede from Grupo Mastrotto, as well as exotic highs like snakeskin, caiman, stingray, and more. Our preview unit came with obsidian earpieces, 24 karat gold plating, and British racing green alligator hide, basically in caterham livery. But Warren, how does it sound? 
As you can probably tell by its diminutive proportions, the T10 Bespoke is a single BA design. Each earpiece houses a custom-tuned Sonian driver and all that that entails, like exceedingly clean mids, but also BA bass. However, its overall response is probably the best sounding single BA design that I've heard in quite some time. And once some modest EQ is applied, well, these single BAs have no right sounding as good as they do. Look, there's simply no way for me to fully cover the T10 Bespoke here. To learn all about it, you'll simply have to take the time to experience it for yourself, which you can do at CanJam Chicago. My first really high-end in-ear monitors were the Ultimate Ears UE10 Pro Custom Fit IEMs. They were also my first Custom Fit IEMs, and I think that was like 15 years ago. The Ultimate Ears UE10 Pro was really intended as a professional stage monitor, perhaps the very model that established the category of premium professional stage IEMs. But it also happened to have a sound signature that a lot of headphone audiophiles back then really loved, myself included. Since then, UE has released some other professional models that have reached classic status with audiophiles, including the UE in-ear reference monitor and then the UE reference remastered, both of which were very highly regarded. Now at CanJam Chicago, Ultimate Ears will have a new professional custom IEM that I think will once again resonate with headphone audiophiles, and it's called the Ultimate Ears UE Premier. The UE Premier is a multi-driver design using 21 drivers per side with a five-way crossover. The driver configuration on each side includes two dual sub-low drivers in parallel with four dual diaphragm mid-low drivers. There's also a quad mid driver, UE's proprietary True Tone Plus driver, and then Knowles' new Quad High Super Tweeter. Now, to my ears, the UE Premier is not intended to be the drier, flatter, neutral-sounding IEM that the original UE reference monitor was, nor is it the less dry but still flatter, neutral-sounding IEM that is the reference remastered. Instead, the UE Premier opts for a signature that I find to be more euphonic, rich in tone, forgiving. I've had some hours-long sessions with the UE Premier since it arrived, and it's easy to lose track of time with them. The fatigue factor with the UE Premier is, for me, incredibly low, essentially non-existent. Anyway, I'm so thrilled that Ultimate Ears is joining us again at CanJam at CanJam Chicago this year. Make sure to stop by their exhibit and audition the UE Premiere as well as the rest of their product lineup. Canera will be joining us at CanJam Chicago, and CanJam attendees will be among the first in the world to audition Canera's just released flagship, the Canera Imperial Loki. The Loki is a quadrid IEM with four Sonian ESTs, six balanced armature drivers, one dynamic driver, and one bone conduction driver. Its bone conduction driver works in tandem with the dynamic to handle a bass and sub bass, four of the BAs work on the mids while the other two tackle the highs, and the Sonian ESTs are dedicated to the ultra high regions. The Loki shell is a distinctive blue and red design and is intended by Canera to reflect a magma flow across the Earth's surface. Its cable is constructed by Effect Audio from ultra-pure Ono continuous cast copper wire and terminated with a rhodium-plated 4.4mm plug. The Loki is bundled with a substantial collection of premium ear tips from renowned brands Asla, Final, Spinfit, and Symbio, providing a whopping 13 pairs for optimal fit and customization. Now, the Loki arrived quite late in our shooting schedule, so my time with it has been brief, but from my initial impressions, it appears that the sound signature may not be a perfect fit for everyone. It will, however, be an absolute hit with some. Beginning with what is becoming my favorite region of its signature, I get a wonderful sense of high-end extension and detail without sounding harsh or edgy. While it might test the limits for those who favor a laid-back sound signature, so far it's been right up my alley. The vocals are slightly pronounced, and the low end is full-bodied, delivering impactful slam. The Loki performs well with a variety of genres, I've been favoring choral symphonies and piano trios, and in a pleasant surprise, it even performs well at low listening levels. I'll be spending more time with the Canera Imperial Loki in the coming days, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts after you visit Canera's exhibit. Again, CanJam Chicago is taking place June 24th and 25th, 2023, at the Hyatt Regency Schaumburg in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, we didn't have time to highlight every single exhibitor in this preview, so keep your eyes on the screen for a complete list of all of the exhibitors and brands you'll get to experience at CanJam Chicago this year. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you in Chicago and on the forums at headfi.org.